Back in Rome, Cleopatra's defeat and continued Roman expansion would lead to wealth and a long line of powerful empresses. Octavian was surrounded by powerful women who defined and navigated the political leadership like a boss, although a lot of them ended up tragically dead. Octavian's wife, Scibonia, gave him his only child, a daughter, Julia, creative. When she was only a few days old, apparently Augustus fell in love with Livia Drusilla on the site and they both promptly divorced their spouses. As empress consort, Livia was active in politics and governed her own affairs. She pushed him towards making his heir Tiberius, Livia's son from her first marriage. Augustus forced him to divorce his wife and instead marry his daughter Julia, her second political marriage already, and a marriage neither wanted. Julia already had two daughters, another Julia and Agrippa the Elder. When Julia and Tiberius's only child died in infancy, any semblances of happiness they had was gone. Julia was left alone in Rome, where by many accounts she lived a pretty promiscuous life. Roman author Macrobius claimed that she was a witty, intelligent woman and was loved by the people, but her sexual activity led Augustus to exile her as a, quote, disease in my flesh. She died from malnutrition on a random island because, as we know, promiscuity by women is never tolerated. Augustus gave his wife Livia the title Augusta, which meant that she would maintain her title after he died. He left her one third of his estates, which is a lot. Her son Tiberius found her power difficult to maneuver around, an influence she had maintained through political allies. But Tiberius's rule was problematic for other reasons. Mostly Julia the Elder's daughters were wrecking havoc on his legitimacy. Agrippa the Elder accused him of murdering her husband, whom she had nine children with. So many children. <laughs> When Tiberius's son died, hers came into the line of succession. So she and her older sons were exiled and died. Yikes. It's a wonder all these exiles didn't band together and start their own civilization. Her remaining son became Tiberius's successor, Emperor Caligula, and three daughters were able to survive. Caligula was by all accounts a terrible ruler. So his sister Julia, yes, the third one, and Agrippa the Younger, plotted to kill him. Agrippa was exiled for a bit, but when Caligula was finally murdered, her uncle and third husband, Claudius, brought her back to Rome. Agrippa was labeled by historians as the first true empress of Rome. Claudius was Livia's grandson. His third wife was executed for having an affair with a senator, so Agrippa the Younger needed to navigate her path cautiously, and by all accounts, she did. He elevated her title to the one his grandmother had had, Augusta, and elevated Livia to deity status. According to some sources, Claudius was sickly, weak, and not suited for imperial life. Although by the standards of his successors, he did a pretty okay job. Despite being an empress consort, Agrippa wanted to exercise real power. She was visible in politics and sat next to Claudius in occasions of state. For five years, there was prosperity, but Roman historians tell us Agrippa wanted even more influence. So she murdered Claudius and installed her infamous son, Nero. Good prospects, zero. Gold coins from right after Nero became emperor show him nose to nose with his mom, with the title, wife of the deified Claudius, mother of Nero Caesar. But Roman historians who recorded his legacy sought to paint him as the epitome of corrupt, debaucherous, and evil ruler. In doing so, they told the stories of his violence against women. It's hard to know what is true and what is not, because the authors of these texts were blatantly biased against him. According to later Roman historians, he and his mother were sometimes lovers. Ew. In order to solidify his rule, he had her killed because she was too powerful and senators were teasing him for being ruled by a woman, and his manhood was threatened. A little bit of ancient toxic masculinity, anyone? Roman historian Tacitus alleged that Agrippa was so desperate for power after murdering her husband that she seduced her own son. Regardless of the likely exaggerations, Nero did order his mother killed. Later, Nero apparently had his first wife and stepsister, Claudia Octavia, the daughter of Claudius, 
banished, bound, and stabbed before suffocating her in a hot bath. He then murdered his second wife, Papea Sabina, by kicking her pregnant belly. But a lot of this probably tells us more about the historians than Nero and his wives. It is interesting, though, that ill treatment of women was used to demonstrate the evil nature of a ruler, which perhaps suggests that treating your women well was to be admired. Although Nero is remembered for killing Christians, intentionally burning Rome, and other ridiculous things, a lot of evidence shows that Nero was not hugely unpopular with the people. He clashed with the Senate and the wealthy elites because they wanted to maintain their wealth. But the Roman Empire was huge and could no longer be governed like a city-state. Taxes had to be raised and soldiers sent to defend far-off lands. The government had difficulty defending its vast territory from the barbarian tribes moving into Roman lands. 